This is a lesson from our Toon Boom animation course. If you want to know more about how to animate with Toon Boom, get the full course at bloopanimation.com slash toonboomanimation. So this scene is what we're going to be completing over the course of our animation lessons. This forest ranger character is eventually going to be a rigged puppet. But this guy here, who's actually a red panda, not a raccoon, is going to be a hand-drawn animation. We're going to start with him. So to do that, I'm actually going to switch over to the hand-drawn interface layout. This will show us more of the tools that are tailored to hand-drawn animation. So let's zoom in on our panda, since we're going to be focusing on him. What's going to happen is that the panda is going to hop in from off screen and eventually make it up to this rock. In order to plan out all these steps, we're going to use the X sheet. We've looked at the X sheet before, but now we're going to take a closer look at how you actually use it. Before we get started, I wanted to point out that I actually have four art layers enabled right now. I did this by going to Preferences, Advanced, and checking Support Overlay and Underlay Arts. That means art layers. I want that so I can have this separate underlay layer. I'm going to use that layer for my sketching, and then I'll do the final art in the line art and color art layers over top of that. You could just put your sketches and your final art on separate drawing layers in the timeline, but I like to work this way so I have fewer layers in the timeline. So let's take a look at our X sheet. Let's do a few things to get our X sheet set up. First thing I notice is that we have a ton of background layers here that we probably don't need. They're just going to be distracting. So if we want to hide those, there are actually a few panels that are hidden along the side here. This is the function section. There's nothing in there now. Then this is the column list section. Here we can just uncheck a few of those background layers that we don't need. We probably want to leave these two on since the character is going to be interacting with them. And we can actually take the ranger off for now too. And then let's just close both of these. Okay, so now we have much fewer columns that we're dealing with. The next thing I want to do is set some tempo markers. That will help us keep track of our timing along the X sheet. To add them, we come up to this menu, go to View, and then Set Tempo Marker. So we want to start from frame 1, and then this is the parameter we want to look at. What this is going to do is insert a divider line every 8 frames. Since our timeline is running at 24 frames per second, we know every 3 of those dividers would be 1 second. If you were timing your animation to a specific piece of music, and you happen to know the beats per minute, you could also use this to set up that so that you would know exactly where the beats fall along your timeline. In our case, it's going to be just more of a general guide. So let's hit OK. So there we go. The next thing I'm going to add in is an annotation column. To do that, we can just hit this Add Column button, and it's going to bring us up a list of columns that we can add. You can see we can add a drawing layer this way, or in this case a drawing column, with all of our choices as before when we were adding them from the timeline. We also have some other types that you can only add through the X sheet view. The type I want is annotation. I will just add that, and then close. I'm just going to condense down those background layers since we don't really need to look at them. What an annotation column is, is it's just an area where you can make notes on your X sheet. For example, since our panda is going to be hopping in, we might want to make a note on the X sheet of every frame where we think it's going to be in a landing position. So let's start here. And then let's say... Maybe here it's going to land. And then here. And then this is a bigger jump, so let's say that that is going to take till here. So then we would plan out the rest of our frames based on those being our key drawings. So I'm going to be animating on twos. That means I'm going to have a new drawing every other frame. That's why I'm marking out all my odd numbered frames here. These tick marks I'm putting are meant to indicate how far along the animation each drawing should be compared to the ones before and after. Drawings closer together means a slower motion, and farther apart means a faster motion. 
If you want to change up the pen that you're using, you can come up here to this menu, go to annotation, and then choose a different pen width or a different eraser width. You can also change your pen's color if you want. And if you don't really feel like writing by hand, you can still enter text into these cells. To erase annotations, you can either just use the eraser on your tablet stylus, or you can hit this little key up here to switch to an eraser. You can use this selection arrow if you want to move around cells that you have things other than drawings in. I actually want to clear out my whole annotation column. So what I'm just going to do is click on the first frame and then use shift click to select everywhere I have an annotation and then just hit the delete key to clear it. What I'm actually going to do is bring in a sound effect and use that to set up our timing. So I'm just going to go up to file, import, sound, choose our sound file, and you can see it appears as a column here in our X sheet. Now in order to use this, we're going to need to see the waveform. So just right click, come down to sound display, and choose waveform. If your sound is quiet, you might need to use this to scale it up. This doesn't make the sound louder or quieter, it just scales up the image so you can see your sounds better. Now in order to hear this, we need to enable some features on our playback controls. When we were in the default layout, those playback controls were over here on our timeline, but now they're up here along the top. The ones we want to make sure are enabled are this one, which will play the sound when you play the timeline, and then this option will play sounds when you scrub the timeline. So I generally keep both of those on. Now if you ever feel like your X sheet is getting too busy, you can always come back to the column list view and set a filter for what you want to show and not show. So here along the top, we could set it to not show sound columns or not show annotation columns. We might turn those off later, but for right now, we're going to keep them on. So now I have everything I need to start planning the animation. I'm going to go in on the annotation sheet and make some notes of where specific things are going to happen. I'm not going to do any drawings of the character yet, I'm just going to plan out the timing. So the first thing he needs to do is enter from off screen. The first jump to go along with this first sound effect is going to be the arc of him bounding in. So he's going to jump in and land. Then he's going to wait for a little bit. In this case, it's about a third of a second. We can tell by those markers. And then he's going to take another jump. Wait a little bit longer this time. Actually, since that wait is so long, let's have him do a little bit of uh, action while he's waiting. He's going to look left and then look right. These little tick marks that I make on the arcs are just kind of marking out the spacing of where the character is going to be compared to its previous pose. So tick marks that are close together are going to be poses that are close together. It seems like these are really long spans of time on the X sheet, but they're going to go by really, really quick. Each of these look lefts and look rights is only like three or four drawings. So here I'm defining how he's going to bend down to get ready for his last jump way up to the top of that big rock. It looks like I need to extend my timeline a little bit here. I'm making sure to only place drawings on odd-numbered frames. That's because I'm going to be animating on twos, so every drawing is going to last for two frames.
So if we're starting on frame one, that means the next drawing is gonna be on frame three, and the next on five, and the next on seven, and so on. Okay, so it looks like I've reached the point where he's up on the rock. So we should be done around frame 100 here. There's gonna be more animation after that, but we don't need the rest of this sound effect. So in order to get rid of that, I'm just going to click and then select and hit delete. Now it's saying, do you want to pull the following sequence up? So that means if I delete these frames, it can either leave a gap or pull whatever's after them up start to start at this frame. I'm gonna hit yes, because that's gonna show that there's actually even more to that sound effect, which we're just gonna delete again. I'm just gonna keep doing that till we have no more sound effect. And now one other quick thing we can do, we can come down to the end of our timeline, select our frames here, both for the panda and the background, and then hit that F5 shortcut key to extend the exposure. So now that we wanna start working heavily in this panda column, I'm gonna go ahead and hide the sound column. We've already used it to create our timing in the annotations column, so I don't need to look at it anymore. So again, I'm gonna come here and get our columns list view. I'm gonna click this button to disable showing sound layers. Then I'll close that all up again. And I'll expand out this column to give us a little more room. And remember, I'm gonna be doing the rough drawings on this underlay layer that we set up before. As you see me go, I'm gonna be using these buttons up here to mark my drawings. You can either mark a drawing as a key, a breakdown, or an in-between. Key drawings are the most important ones. They define how the character moves around the space and tell the story points. Breakdowns come in between key drawings and they give the movement in between keys its character. In between drawings are all the other drawings that are just there to smooth out the motion and make it look fluid. Keeping our drawings marked is going to be helpful later on when we do in-betweening and cleanup. It will let us filter which drawings show up in our onion skinning. When I want to add a new drawing, you're going to see me come out onto the X sheet, select the frame where I want the new drawing to start, and then use one of these buttons. I can either create an empty drawing or create a duplicate drawing. So if I were to create an empty drawing, we can see that we now have a new blank drawing and it's called number two. So what our X sheet indicates here is that a drawing named one starts on frame one and runs until frame nine where a drawing named two takes its place. It's also going to show the current drawing's name at the bottom and the top of the screen as you scroll through the X sheet. It's also going to show the name of any drawing you select. Don't worry, you're not setting a new drawing just by clicking. It's just for your reference. So let's go back to this frame where our drawing two starts. Another important feature I'm going to be using is the onion skinning. You've seen me use this before, but let's talk a little bit more about how it works. So actually, if you look down here on the timeline, you can see we now have these blue handles around our playhead. These define how far forward and back the onion skinning will display drawings. If you want to show more or less, you can adjust it by dragging these blue handles. Once we start having a lot of drawings in a row, this is going to be very important. So from here, I actually want to start fresh and get rid of both of these drawings. So I'm going to right click, go to drawings, delete selected drawings. Then I'm going to do the same with frame one here. So now we have a totally fresh drawing layer with no drawing substitutions in it. And I'm going to go ahead and go through the process of setting all our keys and breakdowns based on the timings we planned out in the annotations layer.